Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Scordalia. That's right, the first time I heard the name Scordalia, I thought for sure that was a Viking princess, but I wasn't even close. It's actually an incredibly delicious Greek garlic dipper spread made with, believe it or not, mashed potatoes. And not only is this a fabulous dip for vegetables and breads and things like that, it's also served as a side dish for things like fried fish and grilled meats. So this stuff's as versatile as it is easy to make. And to get started, I'm going to go ahead and peel and quarter this giant potato. And while technically you can make this with whatever potato you want, I highly recommend the starchy and absorbent russet potato. And by the way, according to the old school recipes, we're not supposed to peel the potato. We're supposed to cook it whole and then peel it, so it doesn't absorb too much water. Which kind of makes sense, until you consider the fact that most of those recipes also tell you to save some of the boiling potato water to thin your dip out with later. And that's where they lost me. And because of that, I think it's just easier to peel it and quarter it and cook it like this, which we will, as usual, do in some very generously salted water. And what we'll want to do here is bring this up to a simmer, and then we'll continue cooking on medium until these are just tender. All right, definitely not falling apart, but very, very tender. And since that's going to take a little while, we should probably multitask by prepping our garlic paste while we wait. And for that, I'm going to take a whole bunch of freshly sliced garlic, like about six cloves. And to that, we will add some nice coarse kosher salt, at which point we'll go ahead and pulverize this down to a paste. And because of the friction those grains of salt provide, this is actually not going to take very long using a mortar and pestle, which really is the only proper way to do this. All right, you're never going to get this down into as fine a paste using like a food processor or blender. So try to use one of these to get it at least this fine. Otherwise, you're going to have to mince it super, super fine on a cutting board and then use the flat of your knife to crush it down into a paste, which will work, but you're going to lose a lot of that garlic oil on the board. So to summarize, everybody needs to have this tool in the kitchen. And that's it once that's set. We'll reserve that until needed. And we'll head back to check our potatoes, which, like I said, should be very tender as tested with a knife. And then once we've determined those have been cooked perfectly, we'll go ahead and drain those very well. And then we'll let them sit just like that in the strainer for about five minutes before we transfer those into some kind of mixing bowl. And then we'll work those over with a potato masher until they're very, very smooth. And yes, if you have a potato ricer, go ahead and use it. But a regular masher works just fine here. Plus, I'm gonna pass all this through a mesh strainer later. Oh, besides breaking down the potatoes, what we're also doing here is releasing a tremendous amount of steam and heat which is good because I do not want to cook my crushed garlic, which is what we're going to add next. And by adding them at this point, they're going to retain that beautiful raw, sharp garlic flavor, which I think makes this dip so good. All right, some recipes do call for roasted garlic, which is, of course, mild and sweet. But I don't want mild and sweet. All right, I want something bold and aggressive. You know, like a Viking princess. But anyway, we will mix in our garlic, at which point we'll go ahead and add some acidity in two forms. I will do the freshly squeezed juice of a half a lemon, plus a couple tablespoons of white wine vinegar. And for the record, some recipes call for all one or the other. Then we'll go ahead and stir and mash that in. At which point we're going to stop and switch to a whisk, which we'll use to incorporate the last major ingredient. And that would be our olive oil. Preferably something on the milder and fruitier side. And of course, extra credit for using something from Greece. And the reason we're going to use a whisk here and stir this in in like three or four additions, is so we get a beautifully smooth and creamy emulsification. All right, this base mixture contains a lot of water, and as you know, oil and water don't like to mix, which is why we slowly whisk in olive oil when we make a salad dressing. So sort of the same principle here. So like I said, we'll go ahead and whisk that in in like three additions, versus dumping it in all at once. And then once that's set, we'll move on to the always important tasting and adjusting step. And that's gonna almost always mean adding some more salt which will vary, of course, depending on how much you put in your water. And of course, you may want to sneak in a little bit of cayenne. And then we'll give it a mix and give it one last taste. And if you wanted to, you could also add a little bit of herb here. Okay, a little bit of fresh parsley would be fine. Or some chives would also work. And I know some people that swear by a little pinch of dry oregano. So if you want to tweak this a little bit, feel free. I mean, you are after all the Socrates of what goes in these. But personally, I like to keep this fairly straightforward. And I'm just going to garnish with a little bit of fresh oregano later. And that's it. Our scordalia is score done. And we could serve it just like this, which is pretty smooth. But to take this up to the next level and achieve perfect smoothness, I'm going to invest the extra three and a half minutes and pass this through a fine mesh strainer, which is going to result in something much more luxurious. 
And by the way, you people with the potato ricers, stop rolling your eyes. All right, we know you're better. And that's it. Once that's been passed, and we finally understand the true meaning of luxury, we can go ahead and serve that up as a dipper or spread next to some vegetables or any other spreadable or dippable edible things. And for a little extra visual interest, I always like to go around with a spoon like this to sort of create some circular peaks and valleys, into which I'm going to drizzle some olive oil. So definitely an optional step. But it is a proven scientific fact that people love shadows. So I think you should do it. And then I went ahead and finished that up with a little bit of fresh oregano. And my Scordalia was ready to enjoy. And this stuff would be amazing on like a thousand different things. But some fire-roasted baby bell halves worked especially well. And as far as the taste and texture goes, I do kind of like the potato hummus comparison. Even though it doesn't have that tahini sesame flavor. But the acidity and the sharpness of the garlic, along with that sort of neutral starchy base, really does deliver kind of a similar effect. And by the way, making some little Greek potato dip tacos with fried eggplant ended up being a great idea. And of course, no one sits around thinking, I wish I was eating something on sliced cucumber. But this stuff could change that, as that really was a fantastic combination. And since there's no guests in the room, let me go ahead and double dip. And then I went back and started over with another roasted pepper, which while I was eating that reminded me of that old saying, man cannot live on vegetables alone. So I decided to finish up by showing you some hot carb on carb action. Oh yeah, raise your hand if you're like me and enjoy the occasional mashed potato sandwich. And even though serving this with vegetables is probably more popular, it really is magnificent on bread. And like I said in the intro, this is also served as a side dish for pieces of fried fish, or maybe grilled meat, or grilled fish. As we've had this with grilled salmon, and it really was incredible. So next time you're planning a cookout, maybe keep this in mind since it's best enjoyed at room temp, which makes it very user-friendly for a picnic and other similar gatherings. But no matter where you enjoy it, or what you enjoy it with, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.